Welcome back guys. It's another K-Swap 308 episode. We're gonna switch gears. I said in the last episode we we're gonna do some sheet metal work back here, but I'm changing course because we've gotta get some irons put in the fire. If I don't focus on some of the stuff that happens outside of this shop, I'm gonna wind up spinning my wheels in here later, and we don't want that or we're not gonna meet any sort of deadline with this thing. I have said that this car is going to SEMA, and I'd like to take a running driving car to SEMA. I know that's not normally how SEMA cars go, I'd like to break that tradition. I also want to compete in this car a week after SEMA at Superlap with Global Time Attack, which means we've got a lot of work to do. For today's project, I've got to start taking a lot of measurements, so I'm going to get started on that. I'll get a camera rolling, and while I work on that, I'll explain to you guys what my thought process is, and we'll see how much we can get accomplished. Let's dive into it. I'm taking measurements so that we can start building rear wing uprights. And I've mentioned in episodes previously that I'm gonna mount those uprights to these boxes at the back of the chassis. They are originally rear bumper shock mounts, which means they are heavily reinforced and tied into the chassis rather extensively, which makes them perfect for what we're trying to do here. We need to transmit a lot of downforce down to the ground and we need to do it effectively. We don't wanna be wasting energy and flexing the car but if we look underneath the car here, you can see just how well tied in these points are. There is a lot of tube work tying it into the main chassis rail itself underneath. There are vertical members, horizontal members. Overall, this thing is incredibly robust and it's perfect for supporting a spoiler. It's also helpful because I really don't want spoiler uprights protruding out of the back of the car, which is what comes to mind when most people mention a chassis mounted wing. This should be a lot more elegant overall. For this project though, we need to design a lot of parts. We need mounts that will attach to the chassis and we need to design the wing uprights themselves. And I want all of these parts to be water jetted or laser cut. I want a really nice finished result. So we'll get these designed and sent out to be cut. Now these rear wing uprights will have to pierce through the back hatch of the car, which means that the wing element needs to be removable in order to get the hatch itself off. It's kind of tricky, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. So I figured, oh, why not climb here into the back of the car so we can get a really accurate measurement from our pedestal height here to the inside of the deck lid because otherwise we're just gonna have to kind of take an estimated guess at it. This will get us closer. We won't have to leave as much excess material on the end of it. One more perk of cutting the whole back of your car out. With the measurements done, let's talk about the arrow that's actually going to be going on the car. I know I've showed you guys this render before, but it's based on the RS Future Turbo K20 powered NSX Time Attack race car built for the street class with Global Time Attack, and it was built by RS Future. And RS Future is going to be building the arrow package for the 308. The wing that Amir runs is pretty much identical to what we will be using. It measures about 70 inches in overall width, and at 150 miles per hour it can develop over 800 pounds of downforce. All of that downforce is going to be transmitted through the pedestals that we've been talking about at the back of the 308. That's not all we'll be doing for Aero though. We can depart for a moment and talk about the rest of the package. We'll be doing a massive front splitter, 3D end plates, a flat underbottom, and a big rear diffuser, which in Amir's class, he's not allowed to run. So our overall downforce capability will be pretty big and it should make for a competitive car, even if we're not taking it to the fullest extent of the limited class rules. And to back it all up, Amir and the NSX have set a number of records across the United States and together make for one of the fastest street class cars in America. But back to the back of the car for a second. Let's talk about this pedestal box. We need to draw it up in CAD so that we know what on earth we're trying to build here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I don't need it to be absolutely perfectly accurate, but the measurements that I took will get us absolutely close enough. Here's a pretty close rendition of the framework in the back of the car that we're gonna be mounting to. And the first step on the list is to turn this into something we can bolt an upright to. I'd like to cap this box off with some plate steel that extends past the rear bound of the box and we'll fold it over the side so that we can get some more support out of it and some more surface area to weld. You can see what that finished product looks like here, along with the four holes drilled into the top of it, which we can use to actually bolt something to. Before we actually weld this panel down, I'm going to weld four captive nuts to the back side of it to make installation of the wing uprights nice and easy. The next piece of the puzzle is the base plate for the wing upright, which will be made out of aluminum and we will bolt this down with four M12 bolts. 
The last piece for today's project is the wing upright itself, which we will weld down to this base plate, making it all one piece. And from here, I got a little bit carried away. I designed the rest of the wing, kind of winged it on design, but overall, this should give you guys an idea of what we're working with. I've done a lot of material removal on the uprights themselves so that we can keep them nice and lightweight. And I believe I'm gonna make them out of 3 16 or quarter inch aluminum plate. I haven't fully decided that this is the final design for them, but I'm really just trying to find something that I like the look of, that's simple, lightweight, strong, that kind of stuff. I've gotta check some measurements on my end to make sure all of this is ready to be sent out to have it laser cut. But as far as how this will fit in the car, all of the aluminum that you see here will be underneath the hatch of the car. This hardware that I'm focused on will be hidden beneath the hatch. Only the carbon fiber uprights will protrude through it. Overall, I'm really excited about how this whole thing is going to look, and I think it should perform really well. I'm excited to get all these parts cut and actually fitted into the car, and it's good we've designed it now so we can make forward progress on the car while this stuff is out getting done. Jumping back over to Amir's car for a bit, the aero package that he has put together looks absolutely incredible and it should offer you guys a good idea of what the end result on the 308 will look like. And with the wing design portion of this settled, we can move to the front of the car. Amir is going to begin working on a splitter design that will somewhat resemble what he's got going on. Obviously, we're going to custom build this to fit the front of the 308. And we've got more wiggle room for what we're allowed to do thanks to the limited class rules, but I'm not going to push this to the limit. That allows for 14 inches of splitter sticking out from each side of the car, and that's a bit too ridiculous for me. So we've talked aero and we know we need to get a handful of parts designed and cut, like the wing uprights and seat mounts, stuff like that. But let's take a minute and talk about suspension. I know a lot of you guys have been really keen on getting to this point. You're saying that you're excited to talk about all the ins and outs of the suspension design and talk about the changes that we're going to make, how are we going to do it, so on and so forth. And on this same note of this whole episode, I've got to start figuring that stuff out ASAP. I need to get control arms either made myself or I need to draw them up and have them machine whichever route I go and I need to figure out what I'm going to do for suspension uprights which involves knowing what I'm going to do for hubs and brakes and all of those associated pieces. There are a lot of unknowns that we've got to solve. Stub axles. I can't even make axles, drive axles, until we have stub axles and know what it's going to be on the outside. We know what the transmission takes, but there's just so many puzzle pieces. We've got to be thinking 20 moves ahead for any of this to work and get done in any reasonable amount of time. I can't just do it piece by piece as I go along. So let's drop down and talk a little bit about what's going on over here. All right, so if you guys remember many, many episodes ago, we had another one of these upper control arm mounts sitting about right here, and we cut it off and the tube it was attached to. And so now we need to draw up a new one of these and reattach it right here. Now, you'll notice that the distance between those is a lot closer together than it was before, which used to be equidistant with these down here. That's not gonna affect the geometry or the way the suspension works at all, so we don't really need to worry about that change. It's not gonna be really any less strong. It's not gonna change any of our kind of camber caster curves, all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be fine. Now, if we come down here and we look at the upright, this is something that we're gonna to need to talk about. As I mentioned before, I would like to change this whole upright. If I can find something from a different car or better yet, something aftermarket, or ideally we can custom machine our entire own upright although that is asking a lot to pull off in our time frame, That'd be the ideal, and there's a few reasons I want to do that. One, to have more brake options, two, to change our bolt pattern, and three, because there's an inherent flaw in this stub axle design. All the 308 guys tell me that if you put any more grip on one of these cars than it came with stock, these are likely to break. There is a cut on them on the inside that is not radiused, and as a result, they crack, they fracture, and this will snap off. Your wheel will come off of the car. You'll cause all sorts of damage, and we really don't want that to happen. I know that putting the type of power we want to and the amount of grip we want to put on this car will snap these off. Now, we could redesign just the stub axle and make it out of a better material without that design flaw, and that is our kind of backup plan. That's what we'll do if we can't come up with anything else. But as a whole, I would like to change this entire unit. Now, 
We're gonna lengthen our control arms to push the track width of the car out, but one thing that I wanna make sure we do with any upright is to make sure that the distance between this point here and this point here, where the upper and lower control arms attach to it, remains the same, or as close as possible as we can get to that. Because we want to try to preserve the geometry in the travel of the suspension as we begin messing with it. We only wanna change as few variables at a time as we can. Changing the track width will simplify the camber curve, but if we change this distance between the two, it's really gonna throw it out of whack and we're gonna have to do a lot of figuring and a lot of changing on this side in order to make the whole thing work correctly. Because we're not gonna change where these points on the inside are located in to out or apart from each other, we have to make sure that this point and this point stay the same for the time being. So if we go to design a new upright, that's something we need to keep in mind. The ideal situation is we will draw a whole new one of these that can accept a different car's brake and a different car's axle. Maybe something like a C6 or C7 Corvette can work, or we can find something that can use those parts with our own geometry. That's the overall goal at hand. So what we're gonna start with is getting some new mounts put on each side of the car here, and then we are going to essentially catalog where these points are in 3D space and redraw this and get some new control arms drawn up. We can take these off the car, draw them up in CAD, and then begin to change them how much we want. So that's first on the list for redesigning our suspension. So I know this isn't the most action-packed episode we've ever had, but it's not always glamorous fabrication or chopping up the back of a car. These are all still steps that have to happen in order to have a car like this get to a completion point. There's a lot of effort and a lot of time that goes into designing parts, measuring, making sure everything's gonna fit, making sure that all the little bits and pieces will come together and work as one unit, and making sure that you don't send files out and pay a bunch of money to have stuff made for you and get it back and it doesn't work, and we don't want that. But now that we have all this design work done, and I'm gonna do a little bit more over the weekend, I can send all this stuff out and have somebody else working on cutting it, and I can focus on other projects on the car. I won't find myself a month from now with nothing to do waiting on parts. That's the whole reason that we've shifted gears here and I've gotten this design stuff out of the way. Over the weekend, I also plan on diving into building the roll bar for the car. I'm really excited to dive into that. Should be a lot of fun. We're gonna get out the tubing bender, the tubing notcher. I'm gonna show you guys the whole process of how to build a roll cage or a roll bar. It's that type of fab work that I really love doing. And the reason that's next on the list is because I wanna cat up the base plates for the bolt-in roll bar and have those water jetted too. But we can do most of the tube work without them. So on that note, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this episode. I know it wasn't our normal format, but it's all detail stuff and it's all the kind of necessary things that have to happen for a car like this. And I'm hopeful that you guys enjoyed it. But on Tuesday, we'll be back to normal fabrication and I will catch you all then. Thanks for watching.